Next up, we had the triple threat. That was that was a match that you were really excited about. Chad Gable, Sami Zayn, Bronson Reed. Yep. What do you think? Um, first thing I noticed in this match, of course, the crowd, like you said, um, Sammy coming out, like crowd was similar to uh, how it was in Montreal. So I, I do like that. Um, overall, when it comes to the match, I was I wasn't that crazy impressed about the match. I felt the match could have been better. I felt a lot of these matches could have been better, but this match I felt could have been better. And you know how I feel about the triple threat thing. I think I threaded to. I hate the no disqualification shit in a triple threat match. Um, but as far as with the triple threat match, one person is always left to the side during most instances and just like laying there until it's their, it's their right time to come in and do something. Um, but overall, I like I love that Bronson Reed was in this match, but him being in this match, I feel takes away from the rival between Sammy, uh between Sammy and Chad. And I believe Sammy versus Chad would have been a better match because I feel they have like great chemistry together in the ring. And we saw that match on Raw between them two and how good it was. Um yeah, yeah. but but I, I love Bronson Reed. Like I, I like Bronson Reed in this match and I like they gave him the opportunity to be in this match and I thought he was fitting for the role he was in. Like you guys have a feud. I'm just trying to win an Intercontinental title title. Like you guys do you, but it's just something about triple threat matches where I feel it doesn't always go completely smooth and like a lot of things have to like work. Uh, one thing I did like in a match, I like, I don't, I've been seeing Bronson Reed do like, I think he jumped out of the ring at some instance. I haven't seen him do that before. And he did a moonsault off the top ropes, which is something I was like really impressed with too. He missed, he missed the, the one. He missed. Yeah, the one, the moonsault. I was still impressed. He got up there and actually did it though. Not, I mean, not he, that, he can, he can move. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't, I don't think I've ever seen him do that though. So I was just like, oh, shit, okay. Nice. He, he so, went for two moves off the top rope and missed both. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's I was I had it on that thing like at what point do you just decide <laughs> as a wrestler something that you're doing is not working. It's kind of like what I said about if I'm a wrestler and I'm fighting Randy Orton, I have a springboard move. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do that move. And so if I have if I if I'm Bronson Reed, I'm 350 pounds and I'm jumping off the top rope and I have these men that are moving out of the way and it hurts when you hit that canvas. <laughs> at what point do you say, let me stop doing this because they keep moving? <laughs> Yeah, I, maybe it's after the second time because I mean he did it two times. If he would have done it, went up there three times, like wait a bit, should All I right, do this? Again? <laughs> what do they say about insanity? The definition of, of uh, doing the same thing but expecting different results. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was interesting. Um, I did what I didn't like. I don't like how Sammy has the finishing move, the the maneuver kick. Is that what it's called? The what? The what is it called? Then but it, the something the kick. The Haluva kick. So the hulu, the hulu he, kick, yeah. he thought somebody had wrote Haluva, uh -huh. or it, it's like Halava. Uh, like, okay. And so somebody had wrote Halava somewhere, and he thought it looked really cool, and he didn't know that it actually was Halava kick, like Halava. So uh, he started calling his kick the Haluva kick, but it, it really just it's like a, a double on time. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, he. I, I don't like how he does that and is able to get a pinfall, but he can't win with the like the the power bomb move that he does. That's crazy. And it's like, what what is going on? That move is way better. Like I, everybody I, says that. So did, did you like, know that? No, I think I think I have seen that before, but people have said that for years at this point. <laughs> the blue thunder bomb. It just looks so devastating when you get when he because he catches it. And he can counter it from uh, a variety of positions that an opponent goes for a move and you just see him spinning him around and yeah. bam, plant to them. Yeah. And it's one of those things to where, Sammy, why are you even going for the pinfall? Everyone kicks out of it. It's kind of like Cody <laughs> exactly. Rhodes in the crossroads. And he if, did it why twice are you to pinning? Bronson Reed. He did it twice to Bronson Reed. I think yeah. one of power, the top ropes and then one like regular. And I was just like, he's never going to get a pinch <laughs> out of this, yo. This you know, crazy. I actually think he did. I, I vividly recall. I don't know who it was against. Maybe uh -huh. it's not so vivid then. But... I recall he did win one match with that blue thunderball, but I have not seen him do it since. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was just like, oh my God, he's never gonna win this. So I was just like, that's disappointing. That should be his actual finisher move. But um and another thing about the match, I did I I really don't like like it gets old quick when they all do moves on each other at the same time. Like they did a double German suplex, they did a top rope suplex and a power bomb off the ropes and shit. I was just like spot. Yeah, it's just like it gets annoying. Like, okay, like we we get it. I think they did it probably like three different times in a match, and it was just like, oh. And like, then Bronson with the he had the fireman's carry. Didn't he do a Samoan drop or something like that with both of them? It's probably yeah. It was just yeah 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 yeah. He did with both of them. So it was just like uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then I'm not at mad the, at it. yeah, and then at the end, um, 
<laughs> Chad <laughs> with uh, Otis <laughs> him yelling at him. I thought it was I thought it was funny because uh, of course he actually hits Chad at the end. Of course, because he kind of saw that coming. But yeah. um, I thought it was funny how you know Otis is sitting there like <laughs> conflicted, like yeah, should I hit him? Should I should I not hit him? Dude, I was I was gonna hit if I was there, I would have hit Otis. <laughs> like Otis is so. Minutes. He's it, so it, it, cartoony. That's the thing. It goes back to Chad too. Like Chad, what are you? You're wasting time yelling at Otis. <laughs> you <laughs> could actually finish this man. Yeah, like, what are you doing? You you're wasting your time. <laughs> like, it's such a cliche heel type thing to do. Like, you yell at your partner why? Because <laughs> they're not doing something to cheat, you know. So, but it's just it like made Chad look an idiot because when, <laughs> yeah. when he came out at the beginning of the match, I understand. And so, I do disagree on one of the points that you had. You said that you weren't like a huge fan of the match. I thought this was one of the best matches of the night. Mm -hmm. but but i do have some you have a fair bit of valid criticism there too but when it comes down to it so off rip they come out there chad says remember uh remember what we talked about or whatever the, the case was he was saying that they have a plan and he'll and do it when the time is right so they get there the time is right and then otis is conflicted and chad is trying to get him to hit sammy and so think about this what was Otis gonna? How much damage was was Otis gonna do if he just hit Sammy? It wasn't like when the time comes, we're gonna give him this uh, this vicious maneuver through two tables, or it wasn't anything crazy, or like when when Sammy was or, or whoever was gonna go for the pinfall that Otis pulls him out the ring. It wasn't anything of consequence. It just looked like a regular melee strike. So when Sammy's outside the ring, Otis is gonna clothesline him, and then you. <sighs> It looked like a very lackluster plan. I would have much rather have seen when Sammy and and uh, or excuse me, Bronson Reed and Chad Gable were in the ring wrestling, and Chad had gotten Sammy out the way, and then maybe there was a chair there, and he told him to use the chair, and then they'd be like, oh, oh, that like a steel chair that could definitely cost somebody the match. If I got hit with the chair, Josh, I might lose the match. Okay. <laughs> so and then have otis conflicted about that otis slams down the chair and then he walks away and then sammy gets back in whatever the case might be but i'm the point that i'm making was that that plan didn't even seem like a good plan <laughs> it didn't i and, mean no, it wasn't it wasn't a valid plan he because he over here warning him before no. the match like when the time comes you know what to do so you just want me to hit him <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that, like, that was your big plan okay i I was like, he said it loud too, but I understand that they're a, they're a live event in an arena, and I was thinking like, could the referee not hear that? But it's like, it's still a no disqualification, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, if anything, that that would have been more of a reason to get a chair because it was no disqualification. You might as well just give Otis a chair and be like, okay, hit him, <laughs> like, don't hit him, like, yeah. So there's no point there, but that's yeah, why thing. did he like punch him in the nuts or something? That's the thing. <laughs> that's a, that's this the, match the thing. is very problematic. <laughs> that's the thing about um triple threat match with no disqualification. It's just like they have a room to do a lot, but it could also not make sense. <laughs> it's just like it's like sometimes they no disqualification. They yeah, like get a chair, get a table, get a ladder, get a, get something like throw about do something. But you, know, yeah. you don't watch AEW, but this week there was some wrestlers that were jumping Daniel Bryan. And Darby Allen came back and he had a flamethrower just to keep them at bay. Like he had the flamethrower, he was like letting it off in the air. And they were like, oh no, nah, we're not getting close to that. So Dave mm -hmm. Brown was able to make a comeback. And so even even just this things like that 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 can equalize a, a situation. Like some the more out like if you give me the liberty and there's no rules, I'm gonna get as crazy as I can. There's been guys like Terry Funk and uh Dusty Rose, they didn't actually use it on somebody, but they did have a chainsaw. I mean, we've seen some crazy things over the years used to scare people off and be utilized as weapons. Flaming tables, thumbtacks. I mean, granted, this isn't ECW, and you want we know a lot more than we did back then about CTE and concussion protocol and things of that nature. And but I'm just saying, give me some rules like that 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 are, that are really flexible. I'm gonna do whatever I have to do. Question: Do you think Chad will ever win the Intercontinental Championship at this yes. point? Yes, yes, and I will tell you why. So you said that Bronson wasn't really there for a reason. Yes, he was, and I'll I'll play the opposite side of the coin here. He was there to eat the pinfall, and what I 
and normally I'm not a huge fan of that because it's very predictable. It's just like, oh, he, so they don't want Chad to lose, and they say so Sammy keeps the belt, and so the third guy's there to take the pinfall, and everyone's happy. No, we're not happy. So what what they did there was by him taking the pinfall, that allowed them more time for the breakdown between Chad Gable and Alpha Academy. So that's going to be the next catalyst. Well, that that is, this I said this match is going to be the catalyst for him getting rid of Alpha Academy and then getting with the Creed Brothers. I think that Chad Gable with the Creed Brothers will capture the championship. And so that I'm not I'm not mad at it because I see the direction they're heading. But as a Chad Gable fan, uh, I mean, I would love to have seen him win it tonight, but I just think it would have so much more gravity if he wins the championships and he's, he's discarded the goofballs and he has a serious feud. He has the Creed brothers that are his hired muscle, so to say, as backup. And they're a legitimate ass kicking unit. If he, was a, if he was a heel champion with Otis, Akira Tozawa, and Maxine Dupree, it, is, it, doesn't, it doesn't hit the same. It just doesn't. 